Okay, welcome good people of Cleveland Heights. Uh, this is our regular city council meeting. It is 7.30. Um, Eddie, please call the roll. Maddox. Here. Russell. Here. Cobb. Here. Cuda. Here. Larson. Here. Petrus. Here. Okay, there are no uh, absences. So we have uh, three amendments to the agenda. Do I have uh, motions for that? Go ahead, Councilwoman Larson. I move that we add resolution 052-2024 to first reading for adoption and 053-2024 to first reading only. Second. Okay, any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, we need to not do this. Um, and uh, do I have another motion here? Mr. President, a yes. motion to include uh, council member comments to after uh, new business where council members are limited to three minutes. All right, do I have a second for that? Second. All in, I'm sorry, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, I'm, I'm, I wanted to move that because um, it seems like new, I don't, I don't want to mix up new business and council comments, so we're just keeping them separate. Um, and do I need another motion here? And no, we're good. Oh, because of those, the first one covered both. All right, very good. Uh, approval of the minutes. Everybody, take a look at March fourth minutes. Any modifications, changes, additions? None. We'll uh, move on to communications from the mayor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the first thing I would like to do is request permission from council to bid the following projects. And I'll run through all of them. Project number 2402-2024, street resurfacing, ADA curb ramp replacement and tree planting project. Project number 2403, Surrey parking garage rehabilitation project. Project number 2404, Clarendon Road and Edgerly Road water line replacement and road resurfacing project. Um, and I believe that I need a motion Correct. to approve our ability to go out for bid for these projects. One quick question. Was the garage, the Lennox garage? Well, Surrey and Lennox yeah. are the okay. two streets bounding right. that garage. Okay. Um, Motion? So move. Second. <coughs> uh, any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, the motion passes. All right, uh, I also wanted to announce to council and to the public that last week I attended a meeting with several of our neighboring cities and the county executive um, to discuss the rollout of our mental health response program. Um, and for those of you who are not aware, this program is an expansion of Shaker Heights CIT uh, crisis intervention team training uh, team program. Um, we are expanding uh, Shaker Heights program into Cleveland Heights, University Heights, Richmond Heights, and South Euclid um, with funding and support from a variety of different sources, uh, including the federal government, county government, and philanthropic sources. Um, there will be a relatively small city um, contribution as well, uh, primarily in the first year for uh, capital needs for the program. Um, and our expected start date uh, will be around June 1st, um, but we will keep you updated as to the progress of that program expansion. Um, and lastly, I wanted to announce to council and to the public um, that I, along with six other uh, U.S. mayors, have been selected to participate in the Mayor's Institute on City Design, which is an initiative of the National Endowment for the Arts and the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Um, this year, there is a special session uh, that is hosted by NYU and Mayor Eric Adams in New York City. Um, last week, we had a site visit 
um, from representative of this program. And I was advised to select a complex project um, with a lot of moving parts in the realm of uh, real estate development, uh, economic and community development, um, so as to best leverage the uh, experts that the Institute is bringing to bear uh, to, to help mayors uh, get training in this city design process. Um, and the site that I selected for this year's session is the Warrensville Triangle, uh, because that is a very complex set of transactions that will hopefully eventually result in the redevelopment of those sets of parcels. Um, this will include uh, questions about, um, you know, site uh, aggregation um, and, and purchasing sites or, or possibly swapping sites with private developers and private uh, property owners, um, in addition to uh, location and consolidation of municipal services and how that could be planned in our community. Um, in addition, to, of course, the classic uh, economic development work that would be done once that site was in a position to be developed in that way. I'm uh, looking forward to this training with a great deal of excitement. My background, my educational background, um, was focused on law and public policy and not planning. So I think that this will be a way for me to expand my skills in the service of Cleveland Heights. And uh, I will give you more info as I get it. So, and, and with that, I'd like to, to close out. Um, and, and thank you for the time. Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the next, uh, we have the city administrator's report. Okay, thank you. Uh, no city department reports. So we'll go to the report of the clerk of council. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. Okay, now we move on to public comment. As you know, we welcome your comments um, and um, our clerk forwards all the relevant information to the administration. So uh, if we don't give you an answer about something, if you come up and you're you know, asking a question, these do get uh, forwarded if it is a question for the administration. Uh, so we're gonna start with um, uh, comments uh, from the public on uh, agenda items. Kobe Picker. Uh, everybody, when you come up, say your name. Yeah, I know she just said your name, but state your name and the street you live on and go from there. Oh, in three minutes. Yeah. You can watch over there. Hi, my name is Kobe Picker. I live on Kensington. Um, I am... Um, I'm happy to see this resolution on the agenda today, um, and I hope that it passes. Um, I spoke at the last council meeting, um, hoping that the council would amend out the word negotiated before ceasefire in the resolution. Um, I still hope that you do, um, but regardless, um, you know, I commend the council for uh, planning to introduce this. Um, I think it shows great uh, political leadership, and it is in line with the values of the city um, uh, ceasefire resolution was recently passed by Cleveland City Council, um, and um, based on what we're seeing nationally, um, the Biden administration has been taking cues from municipal governments like ours, um, rising in a chorus to demand peace and justice in the Middle East. Um, so what you're doing today matters. Um, I look forward to seeing the passage of this resolution. Um, and I'm proud to be part of a community that stands up for justice. Thank you. Yeah. Graham Ball. Hello, uh, my name is Graham Ball. I live on Bradford Road. Uh, Council President Kuda, Vice President Russell, Council Members, Mayor Saren. Um, I want to express my gratitude to you all for engaging in this difficult process over the last few months. Um, I know it is an emotional issue. It is, you know, it can be a contentious issue, um, but I really appreciate all the work that you guys have put in on this. Um, specifically, uh, thank you for amending the resolution to include Barah Abu Alish's name. Um, I think that will really help 
uh, in allowing our community uh, to, to grieve her and the others that we have lost. While the resolution is not exactly as I would have put forward, specifically, uh, you know, I would have removed the qualifier of negotiated before the word ceasefire, I do understand that uh, this compromise is part of the democratic process. Um, I think that former Councilwoman Boyd spoke very well in her farewell address two weeks ago on this um, when she emphasized the importance of sound legislation and policy, uh, the importance of collaboration, and the importance of compassion as the basis for good governance. Um, I feel like we have all demonstrated that um, over the past few months, and it has renewed my belief in our ability to work collaboratively to bend the moral arc of Cleveland Heights towards justice. So thank you for that, and thank you for speaking up for the people of Palestine and the resolution that I hope you will pass tonight. Susan Ephraimson. Susan Ephraimson, uh, Severn Road. Can you pull the mic down just a little bit? In the joys of Yiddish, Leah Rustin gives the classic definition of chutzpah as the quality enshrined in a man who, having killed his father and mother, throws himself on the mercy of the court because he is an orphan. Israel's built a beautiful country, which it shared with its Arab citizenry. They sit on Knesset. They control our holiest site through the waqf. Certainly, Israel's not perfect, but neither is the U.S., but appropriate discourse can never include baby killings, bombings of pizzerias, and bus stops in protest. But it is the height of hypocrisy to do so and then complain about the security measures that Israel puts in place to save lives. After the October 7th slaughter of toddlers in their homes, the rape of women so violently as to have shattered their pelvises and traumatized the women who prepared them for ritual burial, after the kidnappings and beheadings in a well-planned premeditated attack, Hamas used that gesture of friendship that was extended to them by the, by the Gazans who lived there and betrayed them, hunting down each and every one of them. Every death that follows is on them. They knew that Israel would respond. Hamas called this. Hamas declared this war. Call on Hamas to, to surrender unconditionally and return every hostage and to stop using their own as human shields. Stop using ambulances to transport fighters and hospitals and schools to launch attacks. Stop training young shahids to blow up Jews. Every death that follows in this conflict is on them, and to blame Israel is the definition of chutzpah. To ask Israel to stop to act and, and, and so it, to, to ask Israel to stop is to ask Israel to sign up for more terror and willingly open the door to it. All Israel wants is to be left alone and not have to worry about terrorists tunneling, tunneling under them. To blame Israel for taking security measures, that's the definition of chutzpah. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. A call to let Hamas rebuild will guarantee more violence. That's what Hamas has said. More October 7th, Hamas wants every Jew dead and gone. That's what they have said. More October 7th. So I ask if you want peace, and maybe more to some of these speakers, um, where is the call for Hamas to surrender unconditionally? I do appreciate all the effort that went in to, to putting together this, this resolution. Um, it calls for sending home the hostages. We need that. We need to teach the next generation about peaceful acceptance of Israel as a legitimate, um, Israel's legitimacy. Thank you. Melissa Wood. Mr. President, yes. before we start the timer, uh, I think the law director should provide an opportunity to the council president to make a determination on the issue that you that you brought up. Okay, I don't know what the issue is, Mr. President. Yes, um, Ms. Wood uh, uh, spoke to me just as the meeting was started, and she, based on the agenda as it existed when the meeting began, had prepared comments for an agenda item and for a uh, non-agenda item under public comment. With the uh, 
addition of two pieces to the agenda for tonight's meeting, um, she's now, you know, in only the one area and, and believes that, you know, the three minutes is something that isn't going to work based upon the comments she prepared based on the existing agenda. So Let me understand that answer is up to you as to whether you want to allow three minutes or six minutes. So there are two agenda items that there were not two agenda items. that you wanted to speak to. I wanted to speak to one agenda item. One agenda item, and then, and then during then. the course of your meeting, you added something else to the that w w was going to be a non-agenda item. So I have two statements. I would like to give it two different times during the legislative agenda period and during the non-legislative agenda period, as it was set on the agenda. Okay, I'm sorry. One each, right? Three one minutes each. now. Three one. Minutes yes, exactly. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Thank you. So, uh, my first comment is on resolution 0492024. Tonight, you put forward a resolution to make April Earth Month in Cleveland Heights. If we are serious about creating consciousness about issues that affect our planet's health, then we must address the disastrous effects of war. It should not surprise anyone that modern warfare causes severe long-term damage to the natural environment. When this is done purposefully, as Israel is doing in Gaza, it is called ecocide, which is a war crime. In the first two months of the war, Israel destroyed 48% of tree cover and 38% of farmland in Gaza. The first two months of Israel's bombardment of Gaza also produced 280,000 metric tons of CO2 emissions. Half of that amount was produced by the United States cargo planes carrying munitions to Israel. And that was just the first two months of the war. It has now been six months. That figure could easily have tripled. This is a disaster in terms of climate change. The emissions from the first two months of the war alone are equivalent to burning 150,000 tons of coal. Even if you don't care that the water, soil, and air in Gaza can no longer support life, perhaps you recognize that this, that this is one planet that we share. To be stewards of the earth, we must be anti-war. And to be anti-war, we must demand that our country stop supplying weapons to Israel. We bear responsibility for the silent spring in Gaza. No laughing children. No singing birds. That's all we have for agenda items. Okay. So non-agenda uh, non -agenda items, Maurice Rhodes. Good evening, Mr. Council President to the uh, Mayor. Again, say your name and uh, your address Mr. or, or Rose, where you live. 25 Seven Circle Drive. Uh, Mr. Council President to the Mayor, uh, I come uh, to bring my quality of life issues uh, to uh, ask for my individual rights. Uh, that's afforded me by the United States Constitution. Um, tonight, I want to address uh, Christ Cultural Church. Uh, they sit right next door to me in uh, at uh, Cuyahoga County uh, Metro Health. Um, you know, what they've done last year and they this year, uh, I'm talking about specifically um, yesterday, which was Sunday, uh, Easter Day, uh, the 31st of March, um, they had a program. I guess it was the Easter hunt. Um, I live on the eighth floor, and I'm more than, uh, uh, I estimate, two, 300 yards from uh, where they had set up their uh, outdoor, I guess it's PA system or whatever, the so speakers and the microphone. But... Um, you know, they are uh, ungodly. You know, they blast it so loud that it interrupts my 
prayer and my worship. And they say that they're worshiping, but now um, they're ungodly because they can't force their religion upon me. You know, I shouldn't hear it in my apartment where I pay rent and I'm more than 300 yards, 400 yards away from them. And uh, they outdoors because they want to have this Easter egg hunt or something. You know, uh, uh, I ask for my individual rights. I ask for uh, the Cleveland Heights Municipal Code. It's 503, 509.03, loud music. You know, it's disturbance. You know, uh, each of you may want to pray. Uh, you may be Jewish. You may be my Sabbath start Friday night when the sun goes down. It ends on Sunday morning, you know. And so, uh, but then I also want uh, Sunday, the whole day, I'm praying I'm fasting, and uh, I, I, I might want to read. I might want to, you know, how dare them uh, uh, push themselves, they fake religion upon me. You know, uh, I say that they're phony because you don't need a PA was blasting through the whole neighborhood, and I can hear it to be talking to celebrate uh, Easter. Um, what they're doing is uh, fronting. They want everybody to know, oh, this is a good Christian. He, uh, and he talking about Jesus and all that. That's other nonsense. If they care Mr. about Rhodes, their neighbors. Mr. Rhodes, yeah. I'm, so, I'm so sorry your time's up. But thank oh, thank you. you. I want to uh, thank the council. I want to thank the mayor. Uh, please consider me. All right. Thank you. Bob Berger. Hi, my name is Bob Berger. I live on uh, Euclid Heights Boulevard, uh, three, a former three-minute walk to Dave's on Cedar Fairmount. It's been over a year that Dave's closed their doors in my neighborhood. It will be missed, but we will survive. In the late 1980s, there were not one, but two pharmacies at Cedar Fairmount. They too are gone. My neighbors decided not to shop local for their prescriptions, but instead to drive to the new big box pharmacies. We survived the loss of our pharmacies. We will survive the loss of a grocery store at Cedar Fairmount. Sal Russo stated he tried 19 times to find a grocery tenant. He stated his efforts were unsuccessful because the rental unit needs to be remodeled at a cost he could not afford. This is not the reason he has had difficulty finding a grocery tenant. He could not find a grocery tenant because the market conditions have changed on Cedar Hill. A traditional grocery store is no longer profitable in my neighborhood. This is why Dave's literally fled to Lee Road. They knew that over time, they would lose customers to online versions of Heinen's and Whole Foods. Many grocery customers prefer brick and mortar grocery stores, but supermarket publications indicate that online grocery sales will grow at a rate of 15.8% predicted for 2026. <coughs> Dave's realized they could not compete with the state-of-the-art Fairfax supermarket, a 40,000-square-foot store being built less than a mile and a half from their 20,000-foot Cedar Fairmount location. Fairfax, though located in Cleveland, is the closest supermarket to Cedar Fairmount, closer than Dave's on Lee. It did not cost Cleveland Heights tax dollars to build. It is a gift from the residents of Cleveland to the city of Cleveland Heights. Fairfax Market is the replacement to Dave's at Cedar and Fairmount. Fairfax Market was built to offer quality specialty foods for the affluent tenants of the new developments being built in the Fairfax neighborhood, including the Ascent. The proposed grocery outlet can compete with Fairfax because it is not a grocery store. It is a successful business model as being an outlet store that sells food at a discount. But Cleveland Heights desperately needs grocery outlet they offer customers a treasure hunt shopping experience of deeply discounted items. Their corporate mission statement is touch the lives for the better. Customers rave about the store, how it allows them to feed their kids with wholesome food that they could not afford otherwise. Search YouTube for customer reviews of Grocery Outlet. You will see videos on how they touch the lives for the better, including a tour of the Borden store. Grocery Outlet is a great fit for Cleveland Heights but an outlet store is not a good fit at Cedar Fairmount. I'm asking city council and the mayor 
to direct our Office of Economic Development to find a location for grocery outlet for our financially strapped residents. A location that is closer to their customer base, perhaps Severn Center. The Russos have been advertising $400,000 rent per year Mr. for the day's uh, vacancy. Mr. Berger, yeah. I'm afraid we're out of time. You can, you can say one last sentence if you want. Uh, oh boy, Okay, Mr. pages. <laughs> Mr. Russo asked participants at his rally to engage in a letter writing campaign to members of city council to support the solution. This was followed by an email by the Cedar Fairmount Special Improvement District. I, I was saying one sentence. Sal Russo says throwing a Hail Mary for funding grocery outlet. I hope city council is smart enough not to catch the ball. Thank you. Susan F. Ramson. Still Susan F. Ramson on Cedar Road, on uh, Severn Road. Um, well, she moved. In the yeah, last no, few not minutes. in the last few minutes, no. Um, I, so I wanted to respond to, to comments at the Council of the Whole meeting from a couple of weeks ago. The anti-Semitism expressed there was classic and should never be heard in civil society, let alone from leadership of a city that calls itself welcoming. The modern canards being circulated in general include that Jews have this undue power, some cabal of Jewish domination or control. When Councilman Maddox accused Jews of exerting this unfair force in using the contact us button on the city's website to email our concerns to council as somehow unfair and undue. The same button that everyone has access to. But when Jews use it, he objected. Even as Mayor Sarin used his email to contact the Progressive Caucus to, to apply pressure for his opinion, Jews are somehow nefarious when we lobby for an issue that's on the agenda that we care about. I suppose I should be grateful he didn't mention my horns, or maybe he's just afraid I'll redirect those Jewish lasers at him from outer space. People believe this nonsense. Um, and that's what makes it, it, it that's what makes these, these comments dangerous. I mean, isn't a pub, isn't public comment on upcoming resolutions something that a councilman signs up for when they run for council? In a community that is, respects diversity, um, one would expect diverse opinions. The old canard about Jews being disloyal was on display when Councilman Maddox declared he only hears from us on one topic, Israel. That's hardly true. On the same day that he voted to include an Orthodox Jew to the Planning and Zoning Board um, is when he made those comments. And that position is voluntary, so that's stepping up for the community. Has he never heard of names like Jessica Cohen or, or Jason Stein? He is fully aware that Orthodox Jews have given up their time and put energy into helping this community prosper. I sit personally on the CAC. I was on CEM, the Refuse and Recycling Task Force, and have voluntarily engaged with many members of council on a number of issues. Clearly, the Orthodox community does care. It showed up for the You Talk, I Listen events about the ARPA dollars. It protested University Heights, putting a salt dome on this Cleveland Heights border. It, it engages on real estate matters on Taylor Road and the upcoming NOACA thing, we will talk. Why Mr. Maddox and I were even at the same meeting about DeSoto, about DeSoto and Altamont homes. And since DeSoto and Altamont are in, the middle, are in the middle heights, not the Middle East, perhaps he'd like to withdraw the accusation that we are too narrowly focused. Mm -hmm. I'd suggest we do coffee, but he mocked the, those comments as well. Can you give me a little no, no, I, a drop? I need you to just wrap it up. So the, the most disturbing part about this is that he thought it was okay to say these things and to say them in public and that he thinks they're true. And my fear is about who hearing a government official say such things um, would agree to them or to justify some other hateful okay. action based on them. So I'm asking city council um, to repute. No, but go ahead. Just, just, I mean, I'm just we're asking out of time. city council to, 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 to respond okay. and that apologies or retractions are, are necessary. Thank, Thank you. you. Mike Gaynor.
Uh, Mike Gainier, 2412 Euclid Heights Boulevard. I'm here tonight in my role as the Vice Chair of the Planning Commission, and I'm also going to talk a little bit as a citizen in terms of why this issue is so important. Uh, Council received a letter in their packet today about a pedestrian fatality that happened on Warrensville Road back in November of this past year. In the meeting uh, that the Planning Commission had immediately after that, we revisited our decision from three years prior when we granted the conditional use permit for the Hebrew Academy property to go ahead and do their development. I was the lone dissenter on the commission. Uh, you might remember that, uh, Councilman Maddox, uh, asking for a sidewalk to be built along with that product because I thought that project because I thought it was very appropriate and needed. Uh, and unfortunately, a pedestrian lost their life. Let me just quickly read a section of the letter. Uh, the area on Warrensville Road in Cleveland Heights does not have a public sidewalk and is a four lane street with significant traffic and I believe it has the highest speed limit in the city. As part of our review and ultimate approval of that project, we, came, we understood that there were challenges in providing a public so, uh, sidewalk due to the narrow width of land between the street and the campus and the topography of the area. However, despite these challenges, the Planning Commission believed it was worthwhile to investigate all possibilities to improve pedestrian and vehicle safety in view of what happened November 2nd. From a personal point of view as a citizen, I found it crushing when I read the news of the fatality the following morning after that because I felt that this is something that we could have prevented with a public sidewalk. And I know the commission knows you're working on uh, public safety issues right now, looking for grant money, and we want to include the, wa the Warrensville corridor in that study so that we can look at what can be done to prevent something like this from happening again. And speaking as a citizen, I kind of look at this as an equity issue. I know some of you live in the Noble neighborhood and I ask you to envision how you walk from where you live by say Noble Library to the Walmart shopping center without crossing a busy street twice to walk on South Euclid's sidewalks. We need to fix this. This letter is all about getting a sidewalk done. We can't revisit history, but we can do the right thing going forward and figure out a way to do this to make it safe for, for pedestrians at all times to walk on a public sidewalk along War Warrensville Road where it's been lacking for decades. There's two um, bus stops along there with no place to stand. And if anybody has any questions or wants more information on the project, I'm glad to have them reach out to me and I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you. James Mr. Williams. Mr. President. Mr. President. Oh, when, yes. when we're, we're finished. Can I say something about Mr. Gaines' comment as well? And who's finished? Uh, when whatever the comments are finished. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Hi, my name is James Williams. I live at 25 Severn Circle, uh, Cleveland Heights, Ohio. And um, I wanted to talk about um, having, you know, pushing, still pushing that issue for a living wage for uh, Cleveland Heights because uh, residents, it's very important to, um, to have that discussion in Cleveland Heights um, because of uh, what's been happening. I've seen on the news that President Cuda was called down on Noble um, for the Save-A-Lot issues of breaking in and, um, you know, uh, trying to get them to continue to be in our neighborhood. Um, it's probably one of the facts that the reasons why I, I um, made the um, comment of not having a public housing put in that area because that area is, it's only going, it's not the area that's going downhill, but the cadence of just being down on a slope of a hill that makes people sort of um, go the wrong way. If you're, you know, doing something, you know, you, you, you get what I'm trying to say. Um, and so uh, I think that things, many times um, people have to be put in a different area and, um, and live a different way in order for things to change and to um, make things better for everyone. Um, 
And that's really about it. Am I, I'm going to leave you with uh, this one here. Um, There's a highway to heaven. None shall go up there, but, but the pure of heart. There's a highway to heaven. Walking on the King's Highway. I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you. All right. Lawrence Bradley. <clears throat> Just, uh, Mr. Williams, I'm just going to correct one thing. There's no public housing being proposed on Noble Road. There it's, was, no, there, no, there no public housing. Uh, Not right now. Oh, no, right, go ahead. Yeah. 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 That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Lawrence Bradley. I live at uh, 3776 Bainbridge Road, uh, corner of Bainbridge and Maple. Uh, I own a property behind my house um, that, that's uh, at the dead end. And my issue is we're hearing rumors about what's being built there, but no one in our neighborhood has been contacted. Um, we kind of, we, my wife heard rumors of there being, there being built uh, houses or, and or condos. Um, we don't know who, we haven't heard any information. I know the Hebrew Academy owns all the other lots, but I own mine and, uh, there's a couple other people that own their lots behind their housing. So um, the, the issue is I'm trying to figure out why haven't we been contacted, if it's true. Uh, if, you know, we, we deserve to hear some kind of uh, reason why, if they're doing it, you know, if you're doing it, why? And why haven't we been contacted? Um, I bought the land because I liked my privacy behind the house. Uh, I don't want to see uh, you know, a, how, a housing community being built behind us if, you know, if, you know, without, I mean, without being asked. I've been approached by multiple people. I, I'm not sure who they were representing, but they, you know, were approaching me to, to, to buy the land. I don't know why, and I don't know, it, you know, and then the prices that they were even trying to purchase it for were, uh, you know, <laughs> not even acceptable. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure. So, um, yeah, so, my, you know, we're just trying to figure out what's going, what's happening, what's going on. Uh, we, I've talked to my neighbors. In fact, one of my neighbors is here today with us, and uh, she'll be asking questions also. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to figure, you know, we, as citizens, have been paying my taxes. I feel I should be notified and given more information about what's going on. So um, the rumors have not only come from someone here at City Hall, but also uh, from the uh, um, the real estate person who was trying to purchase the property, uh, both saying that it was definitely already in process and that it was a go. So I, 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 I don't know if it's true, but I would like information on that, uh, on what is actually happening. Um, thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bradley, I haven't heard anything about that, but Addie, can you make sure that somebody gets back to him if there is information available? Yeah. Thank you. Patricia Frostbrook. Good evening, Council President, Madam Vice President, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, uh, and Council Members. Patricia Frost Brooks, 3782 Bainbridge Road. Our family resides at this address for about 38 years. We moved here for so many reasons, uh, as other residents of Cleveland Heights has. As an educator, retired happily now for 10 years, I uh, was looking for a better school system for our daughter, proximity to where I taught in East Cleveland. Other items that were considered when we moved here were Kane Park, Cleveland Heights, uh, rec center, it's community that had it's a community that has ethnic, racial, <coughs> religious diversity, and accepting of all community people, regardless of their preference. Also, depending upon your physical stamina 
and where one resides, there's walking distance to restaurants, movie theater, and one's favorite adult spots. Are, are, all are doable, and Cleveland Heights has other beautiful attributes. Despite the high property taxes, we chose Cleveland Heights to reside. We have seen change, transformation, growth, and improvements, and much more to, it, to improve upon. This city has growth potential. With growth, improvement, and transformation comes discomfort and disequilibrium. disequilibrium. Perhaps around the year 2020, or maybe a little bit prior to that, on Bainbridge, which is a nice, peaceful street, lots of greenery and a dead-end street, great to raise your children on, we began to see persistent solicitation of our homes. Signs were posted on utility poles saying, we buy homes. We received several phone calls, postcards, letters, and personal approaches while we were in our driveways or in our yards of individuals wanting for us to sell our homes. Some did and some did not. It appears that our street is most desirable. Section of the street from Maple, Bainbridge to the end of the street. These homes have empty lots behind them. Rumors began to spread as to why our homes were asked to be sold and then were bought. I even asked the council members to investigate this, but I have not heard anything back. And you, Mr. Mayor, when you were campaigning, um, I also asked you. Um, now they are buying our homes, and I've asked the surveyors about this. We found out that the original street plan on Blanche has a, is a one-way street, and it dead ends there. There are approximately 33 lots behind our homes on Bainbridge. We found out that the Hebrew Academy of, of Cleveland in 2015 15 bought these lots for $3.1 million. Today it has a value of $4 million. Some of the lots are labeled property of Cleveland, Cleveland Heights land reutilization Brooks, program. I hate to say this, we gotta wrap it up. We're asking, when are we going to have the transparency? When are the rumors going to cease? And when is city, the city of Cleveland Heights going to inform us, the residents of Bainbridge, what is going to be happening? to our land that's Your behind question. our house. Thank you. Thank you. President Kuda. Yes. I'm wondering if I could just very briefly oh, great. provide a little bit of, of insight into this. So um, in in the, not the most recent, it might have been uh, a, maybe a, a week or so ago, um, maybe two weeks ago, uh, the city e-news that goes out, um, we made an announcement um, related to the, the issue that uh, has been brought up just now about several parcels on what is currently a paper street, but not a street in reality, uh, the Blanche Road extension. Um, Blanche Road was intended to extend as far back as Bainbridge Road does currently, um, but instead it ends a bit prematurely. And the intention at the outset during the design of that street was that that would extend further back. Um, and the, the announcement that we made, and I'll just, I'll just read from it just to make sure that all of the information is provided. It says, with federal grant, Cleveland Heights prepares to develop residential parcels that have been vacant for decades. With the recent award of $850,000 in federal <laughs> funds, Sorry. In federal funds, Cleveland Heights will set the stave for achieving its long-held goal of putting residential parcels that have remained vacant for decades to use as the site of 29 new single-family homes. Uh, thanks to the advocacy of Congresswoman Chantel Brown and U.S. Senator Sherrod Brown, an allocation for the Blanche Avenue Extension Project, which will extend the street and utilities, electricity, water, sewer, and gas lines, from where Blanche Avenue dead ends at the city's eastern border, was included in the 2024 Consolidated Appropriations Act. The legislation was passed by the House and Senate 
and signed into law by President Biden on March 9th, 2024. Um, so this is the, we, we certainly did not want to keep this a secret. We were uh, ensuring that we were announcing this publicly. Um, this is something that we've been working toward, I guess, for quite a while uh, here in the government. And we, uh, you know, finally were able to secure a, a relatively substantial federal um, allocation to allow this to take place. Um, so the expectation is that the, the federal funding will extend the street and make what are currently landlocked properties um, available to a right of way so that those houses, as single family houses, can be developed. Um, it certainly was not our intention to, to be secretive about this. Um, and so I'm, I'm sure that Blanche Road uh, extension will be something that we'll be talking about quite a bit more. Um, and we can, we can discuss it after this meeting if you'd like or another time. But uh, I think right now I just wanted to provide a little bit of uh, information about the, the topic. Thank you, Mayor. One more. We've got Melissa Wood. Uh, my name is Melissa Wood. Today is the 178th day of Israel's genocidal war on the captive population of Gaza. It has been 168 days since this council passed a resolution supporting Israel's right to defend itself. Today, Israel has slaughtered over 13,000 children. That is what Israeli self-defense looks like. And no one needed a crystal ball to predict it, just a little knowledge of history. Still, in your resolution, there is no condemnation of Israel. What do you picture when you think of a white supremacist? A man in a white hood? A neo-Nazi saluting Hitler? A good old boy flying his Confederate flag and the Israeli flag from his pickup? But you can also tell a white supremacist from their words. Golda Meir said, Palestinians do not exist. Menachem Begin called Palestinians two-legged beasts. Yitzhak Shamir called them grasshoppers to be crushed. These were all prime ministers of the state of Israel. But you don't have to look to the past to find such sentiments. The following are all statements made by current members of the Israeli government and Sarah Netanyahu, Bibi's wife. I have all the sources if you are interested. Sarah Netanyahu, 10-10-23. I really hope that our revenge, that of the state of Israel on the cruel enemy, will be very, a very big revenge. I don't call them human animals because that would be insulting to animals. Galit Distel Atabarian is, is a member of the Knesset, 11 1 23. Hate the enemy, hate the monsters. Any vestige of internal bickering is a maddeningly stupid waste of energy. Spend your energy on one thing, wiping Gaza off the face of the earth. Let the Gazan monsters fly to the southern fence and flee into Egyptian territory, or have them die, and have them die horribly. Gaza must be wiped out. Sivka Fogik, also a member of Knesset. 21022. Anyone who wants to harm me, I will harm him back. And as far as I'm concerned, the concept of proportionality must cease to exist. So I will tell you something that is very unpleasant to say. If it is one Israeli mother crying, or a thousand Palestinian mothers crying, then a thousand Palestinian mothers will cry. We are too merciful. It is time for us to stop being so. It has nothing to do with racism. These are all hateful statements. Unfortunately, since October 7th, I have heard statements from citizens of, such statements from citizens of Cleveland Heights, some from the very people who have stood here and asked you not to pass a resolution for a ceasefire. That there's no such thing as Palestinians, that Palestinians have no right to the land, that there are no civilians in Gaza, that there is no need for Israel to be commensurate in its actions, and it looks like this is the side you have chosen. Just know this. There is a right side of justice, and your resolution will not bring Cleveland Heights together. I will never break bread with a genocidal white supremacist. I will never make friends with someone who supports the massacre of children. I will fight warmongering racists for as long as I draw a breath. 
All right. Is that it? That's all. Okay. Thank you. Um, next, we move on to uh, legislation. Just so our audience knows, we're going to be going through um, <clears throat> quite a few pieces of legislation now, if you don't want to stay around. And then we have um, council comments a little bit later. Oh, uh, Councilman Maddox, I'm sorry. Did you? I was just going to state, uh, I, I know that Commissioner Gaynor made uh, statements tonight. I just wanted to reiterate that I really appreciate him coming in and speaking on behalf and that he's been championing this since I was a member of the Planning Commission. Absolutely. And in fact, when that incident happened, he was the first person that popped in my head. And so if there's anything that we could do as a council, I'd work with the administration to do that. I, I, I'm well aware of the nuances of that situation mm -hmm. in terms of uh, the distance, the construction and the development issues that we faced even with that project and the sidewalk. But it is something that I I would absolutely be open to discussing with this council in any way that I, I can. I just wanted to say again, I appreciate Commissioner Gaynor for coming in tonight. And for any of the public who's confusing about what his role is, he's a member of the Planning Commission and was on the Planning Commission when this was discussed as well as I was uh, when Hebrew Academy was being built and designed in terms of the safety and the discussions on what was happening on Warrensville Road. So it's a well-known uh, conversation that absolutely needs to continue to happen there in that section. He's absolutely correct. Uh, quite a few people catch the bus there and it gets even more dangerous in terms of when the plows are going through in the, in the snow. So again, anything that we can do to have a conversation around that, I'm, I'm open to. I just wanted to say I appreciate him for coming in tonight to share that information. Thank you. Add some color. Um, Annie, go ahead and uh, read uh, what we have uh, first readings uh, consideration for adoption first. First, I have resolution number 049-2024 on first reading. A resolution recognizing April 2024 as Earth Month and declaring the necessity that this legislation become immediately effective as an emergency measure introduced by Council Member Larson. Okay, do we have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All right, any discussion? All right, all in favor? Zanakuda. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, I didn't look your way. It's all right. <laughs> um, I just wanted to read one of the whereas statements in this resolution. Please. Whereas it's increasingly important to observe this month as Earth starts to unravel the harmful effects of climate change, which not only poses a threat to our existence, but is irreversibly damaging all forms of life. I felt this resolution was important, and we hopefully we'll be doing it every year because it elevates all the local activities that are occurring in April, sponsored by the administration and the Cleveland Heights Green Team. So I look forward to making an announcement more about that later on. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Um, any other comments? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Next, I have resolution number 050-2024 on first reading, a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Wade Trim, Inc. for professional engineering services relating to construction administration and resident observation for the control of sanitary sewer over overflow CH-9, CH-32, CH-57, and CH-58 project and declaring the necessity that the, this legislation become immediately effective as an emergency measure introduced by Mayor Saren. All right, so we have a motion. So moved. Second. All right, it's been motioned and seconded. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Next, I have the added uh, resolution, resolution number 052-2024 on first reading, a resolution denouncing rising hate and discrimination in Cleveland Heights and around the world and calling for a peaceful solution for Palestinians and Israelis. Introduced by Council Member Gail Larson. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. second. Go ahead. All right, any discussion? Councilwoman Larson. Thank you, President Kuda. Thank you to all of our citizens who have stood in this chamber and emailed and called council with their thoughts on what council should do regarding the crisis in the Middle East. I appreciate the passion that has been expressed by all who communicated with us. This resolution reflects council's re request for the return of hostages, for a negotiated ceasefire, and for the humanitarian aid to flow to all who are suffering to this conflict. Additionally, in this moment, council wants you to know that this Hates, that the hate speech in any form is not acceptable in this city. We're all are welcome. Thank you. All right. Anybody else like to? <clears throat> Councilman? 
I just want to thank again Councilman Larson for uh, putting this resolution together and going back and making the edits and this council for having those difficult conversations. Uh, representation is critical in this city. And I think this speaks to the fact that this is impacting multiple lives and in multiple areas and, and that we see what's happening overseas does make a difference and, and does have a, a and leaves a gap and a hole for the people in our community. Um, again, I know this conversation was difficult. I know it's brought up a lot of emotions, but I do think it's, it's necessary. And based on on the original resolution that we did, I, I think that we could not do any less than that. We needed to acknowledge all of the lives. And so I, I think this does that. I think um, I appreciate the work that has been done with this council. And I think in the future, we'll continue to have conversations about what resolutions like this look like and the types of impact that they will have. Um, but I, I'm really, really proud of the work that this is this council has put together in terms of passing something um, that lends a voice to all people in terms of everything that's happening with this impact. And so I appreciate that. Uh, yes, uh, I would like to thank Councilman Larson as well uh, for her diligence and her cooperation and for looking at all people. She also incorporated the language from the AFL-CIO that also uh, put together a resolution. So I would like to thank her for that as well. So that lets me know that Council is not only thinking of just our residents, but they're thinking of all people around the country. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, I'll just add, uh, I, first let me just say to all of you who are waiting patiently and, and even those of you who are waiting impatiently, we're sorry it took so long. Um, this, this, this just was difficult and I, you know, those of you who are here, you, you know why. Um, and there were a lot of emails and I, I, wanna, I wanna actually address to those of you who wish we would not spend another moment. Uh, and we did have several. <laughs> You know, that said, please don't spend time on these types of resolutions. Um, and while we understand and perhaps maybe even some of us share that, that frustration, um, like you, this council is a diverse group of citizens. And we um, have an obligation to make decisions by consensus. And that's what we did. That's what we did. And um, I do think that there are a lot of municipalities um, speaking out, and I do think it has a cumulative effect, and I'm, I'm glad we did this. And lastly, I, I'll turn to Councilwoman Larson to say thank you uh, for providing your gentle and caring touch to a very sensitive uh, issue. Um, we appreciate you, your even-handed compassion for all lives lost in this tragic conflict reflects, I believe, the collective sorrow our community feels at this time and uh, the loss of precious life in Israel and in Gaza. Uh, so uh, with that, I th we did have a motion and a second, correct? Mr. President, we do need a motion to suspend rules because ah, there's no emergency you. language. I was caught up in that one. Do I have a motion to suspend the rules because this was not on the original? So move. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on that? All right, all in favor of suspending the rules? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, and now uh, I need a motion. We have the motion. Oh, that's right. We did have the motion. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, if there is no further discussion, uh, all in favor on the on uh, uh, what's the number, Addy? Please. Zero five two dash twenty twenty four. Okay, all in favor of that resolution, uh, aye. please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That resolution passes. Okay, first readings on, oh, no wait. Yes, correct. That's where we are, first readings only. Uh, first, I have resolution number 051-2024 on first reading, a resolution supporting U.S. Senate Bill 3681, the Preparing and Retaining All Educators Act, introduced by Vice uh, President Russell. Uh, next, I have resolution number 053-2024 on first reading, a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Strategic Structure Investments, LLC, for a loan under the city's storefront loan program to help renovate the storefronts at 2201 North Taylor Road and declaring the necessity that this legislation become immediately effective as an emergency measure. All right, thank you, Addie. Um, Council Vice President would like to say something about 051 first, and then we'll move on to second readings. Yes, I would like to thank all council for uh, looking at this resolution and supporting this resolution. As you all know, within our school system, we are in desperate need of teachers, paraprofessionals, uh, bus drivers, uh, cooks, aides, 
all of those things. Most people don't know what a paraprofessional is, but a paraprofessional is a teacher assistant. And a teacher assistant has to have a pretest or an associate degree to be a paraprofessional. They start off with $12 an hour and to the highest at, 19, at $16 an hour. They are jumping ship all over this United States. It is very hard to find a paraprofessional to help a teacher <coughs> to train and advocate for our children. So this resolution is in support of a grant dedicated to assist schools in recruiting, training, and retaining paraprofessionals to bring out the quality and the development opportunities to advance higher wages in paraprofessionals to make sure that our children around this country have the ability to learn and have the access that paraprofessionals need to be able to have a living wage. So thank you. You're welcome. And I know uh, Ms. Brooks knows all about this, what we're talking about. Um, okay, second readings. First, I have resolution number 037-2024 on second reading, a resolution appointing Harmony Cross, Mara Scoach, Sam Bivens, and Sarah Lean Oakley Toombs as members of the Citizens Advisory Committee of the City of Cleveland Heights, Ohio, introduced by Council Member Cobb. Motion? So moved. Second. All right, it's been motioned and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Next, I have resolution number 038-2024 on second reading, a resolution appointing John Talley as a member of the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board of the City of Cleveland Heights, Ohio, introduced by Council Member Cobb. Motion. So moved. Okay, second. second. All right, it's been motioned and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Next, I have resolution number 039-2024 on second reading, a resolution appointing Elkanon Stern as a member of the Board of Zoning Appeals of the City of Cleveland Heights, Ohio, introduced by Council Member Cobb. So moved. Second. All right, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Next, I have resolution number 040-2024 on second reading, a resolution appointing Charlie Mosbrook, Howard Meyer, Cole Ware, and Aaron Hughes Ware as members of the Transportation and Mobility Committee of the City of Cleveland Heights, Ohio, and declaring the necessity that this legislation become immediately effective as an emergency measure introduced by Council Member Cobb. So, so moved. One of you has to second it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Next, I have resolution number 041-2024 on second reading, a resolution appointing Catalina Wagers, John Barber, Tammy Masuoka, and William Hanovan as members of the Climate and Environmental Sustainability Committee of the City of Cleveland Heights, Ohio, and declaring the necessity that this legislation become immediately effective as an emergency measure introduced by Council Member Cobb. So moved. Second. All right. The only thing I'm going to say is, you. I know you're hearing a lot of names right now, this is an all-star group of people that are uh, getting appointed to these committees. And I appreciate all the hard work that went into gathering them and getting this resolution passed. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. Next, I have resolution number 042-2024 on second reading, a resolution authorizing participation in the ODOT Cooperative Purchasing Program for road salt for the 2024-2025 winter season and declaring the necessity that this legislation become immediately effective as an emergency measure introduced by Mayor Saren. Second. Any discussion? President Kuda. Please. I just have a request for the administration. When Cleveland Heights puts in its annual order for salt, please think about the need to find another location for the salt barn at the Morrinsville Triangle to prepare the way for economic development. I'm very curious to hear how that design institute moves you through that portion of our city because it is challenging. There's some multiple things that need to be done there and I hope you'll keep us updated, please, Mayor Saren. Thank I'll you. Second that. I think that's why you uh, picked that place for the, for the conference. <laughs> There's a lot of complications there. Um, any discussion? All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Councilwoman Larson. Welcome. Finally, I have resolution number 043-2024 on second reading, a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Knowles Municipal Forestry LLC to update the street tree inventory system, introduced by Mayor Saren. So, so Second. All right, any discussion? 
All right. Um, I know the tree people will be happy and probably most of Cleveland Heights. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. Let's move on to committee reports. Committee reports. Councilman Larson. Sorry. Next meeting of the Municipal Services and Environmental Sustainability Committee will be April 15th at 10 a.m. And I would like to say congratulations to the citizens who were officially appointed to the Transportation, Mobility, and Climate and Environmental Sustainability Committees this evening. We're waiting for the mayor to make his three appointments for each committee to fill them out completely. I look forward to learning about the issues that these two committees want to address when the committees begin meeting. April is Earth Month. And here are just a few of the events the Administration and Cleveland Heights Green Team are promoting. And the details can be found in the city's e-news and on the website for the Cleveland Heights Green Team at chgreenteam.org. They're having a make and take community DIY workshop at May, May Cleveland, April 3rd, a Caledonia Ravine cleanup on April 6th, seed starting workshop in Coventry Branch of the Heights Libraries, April 16th, Two events at the Lee Roads Branch of the Heights Libraries, a solution-based climate discussion, April 18, and Native Plants Workshop, April 25th, an Earth Month Challenge, Earth Month Challenge hosted by City of Cleveland Heights, April 20th, Community Swap Meet at the Nature Center at Shaker Lakes on April 20th, and University Heights Sustainable Home Fair, April 21st, and a Forest Hill Park cleanup, April 27th. Again, all the details are on the City E News and on the Green Team's website. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Committee reports. Go ahead, Councilman Petrus. The Housing and Building Committee has a special meeting scheduled for 10 a.m. tomorrow. Sorry, my microphone wasn't on. The Housing and Building Committee has a special meeting scheduled for 10 a.m. tomorrow. The purpose of this meeting is to continue to work on President Kuda's short-term rental legislation. As a reminder, the Housing and Building Committee's regular meetings are at 5 p.m. on the second Tuesday of the month. This means that the committee's next regularly scheduled meeting is at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, April 9th. Mr. Zamp, the Director of Planning and Development, will talk with the committee about the City of Cleveland's Residence First initiative and whether he feels that any portion of it should be considered here in Cleveland Heights. Thank you. All right, any other committee? Go ahead, Councilwoman. Uh, Council the, Vice President, sorry. The uh, Planning and Development Committee had a meeting on March 6th. We talked about uh, discussing having a tag group. You all should look at that. We had a about a 15 um, uh, members, uh, I shouldn't say members, about a 15 uh, group of uh, residents to come in to talk about forming a tag group, a group that would help the planning development uh, with the strategies and helping the mayor and the planning development department in helping um, develop things around Cleveland Heights. Also, uh, the planning development committee will be having another meeting on this Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024 at 1030 a.m. We'll be discussing uh, council's procedure around planning and development, also uh, the worship um, zoning, of zoning of uh, place of worship. Uh, that is it. Right, thank you. Anybody else? All right, let's move on to old business. New business. My head's on a swivel here. Mm -hmm. um, council comments. Anybody have a comment? Councilman Maddox? I just want to say tonight, because it's keep coming up and we just made all these appointments and I know Commissioner Gaynor was in here, so we keep speaking to the commissions. And so I just want to implore the community as well to really please, uh, when you see openings on our boards and commissions, to take the opportunity, if you have the time, um, to apply for those. It's critical that we remain uh, fully staffed in those committees and that they're diverse as possible across the community. A lot of important work happens at those committees and those boards levels. I, I learned how this city functions and how things move move and how planning development works sitting on six years from the planning commission. You learn so much from the city staff there that allows you to be able to transition. Um, that information is critical to be able to take back to your areas and your neighborhoods. And so one of the things I want to continue to push is that as you see these openings and the applications are right on the website is that you please apply for those. Uh, we want representation from every area of the city, as many diverse communities and, and, and spots as we absolutely can. So when we're having these conversations, the right people are at the table 
we're making the decisions. And so I just want to encourage the community again to please apply for those boards and commissions uh, as well. I, I know that council president is going to be discussing the fact that we even have an open council seat. Um, so those things are, are really gradual. The reason I'm bringing that up tonight is so many of you reached out to me this past week to ask questions about the open council seat. And one of the things that I suggested is for anyone who's not sure if now is the time to, to test it out in a board or a commission first, um, to really feel what's happening in the city, get an understanding of how things function, how the meetings flow, um, what projects are, are being touched in, exactly who does what in the city. And so I just want to encourage them. I know Councilman uh, Cobb has done an exceptional job filling those positions, um, but it's a whole lot easier if we have more applicants. And so um, please, 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 if you are interested, your voice absolutely matters. You do not have to be proficient in understanding everything in city government. Um, we, we want your gifts. We want your talents. We want your point of view. <clears throat> you could be bringing something to the table we've never seen or heard before. And so I just want to encourage people to please apply for these, uh, these positions across the city. It is so important we're making these decisions again that we have diverse people at the table when we're having these conversations. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Addie, do we have any openings right now? I, I'm sorry, I'm putting you on the spot, aren't I? I'd have to take a look. I think there's one for what, BZ, who is it? Landmark. Landmark, thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, I just thought, landmark commission. I just thought while we were on the topic. Okay, so Landmark Commission, but there, you know, you never know, there might be others, so. President, President Cutter. Please. Just as a oh, yeah. plug, um, I've, I've got ding, ding, several uh, uh, commissions and boards to which I have appointments subject to council's confirmation. Um, and at the, the mayor's portion of the, the Cleveland Heights website, uh, there is an application to um, apply for those boards and commissions as well with links to sort of the original uh, originating documentation for those boards and commissions if you would like to learn more about them uh, before applying. Uh, and so I encourage everyone, uh, either you or your friends, to apply to those boards and commissions as well. So thank you. Thank you for the plug. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, any other council comments? Oh, sorry. There we go. Uh, yes, I would like a moment for per personal privilege. Uh, I would like, to, number one, to thank um, the residents of Cleveland Heights. Um, most of you have known I've been going through some trials and tribulations with my mother's health. And I want to appreciate, I want to let you know how much I appreciate all of the emails of well-being that you have sent to me. But I also want to do a special shout out. And I don't want to say his name. I was thought about saying his name, but it may not be appropriate. But in the emails, uh, four physicians from Cleveland Heights notified me by email and asked if I needed any assistance with my mother's health. And we were in such a dilemma far as my mother's health, I didn't know what to do. And I reached out to a physician within Cleveland Heights who called me and we discussed my mother's health. And if it was not for him, my mother would not be alive today. So I wanna personally, personally thank him for his caring, his reaching out to me and the other physicians who thought enough to say, you are a Cleveland Heights council person. You are a resident of our community. We love you and we're here to help. So I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. Also, I want to announce that um, the, in, the school employees of Cleveland Heights University Heights is adopting Oxford Elementary School. Oxford Elementary School is a school that we have dis that we have discovered that needs our help. So in adopting that school, we are asking for the community to help us as well. What we're going to be doing is collecting all kinds of uh, items to put in a bag, a backpack for the children to take home for the weekend. We're adopting them for a weekend. We're gonna be giving them all kinds of food. We're gonna give them all kinds of socks, all kinds of toiletries, whatever they need for that weekend. The superintendent and the school district is helping as well. They are putting a box inside of the Board of Education for any person in Cleveland Heights who wants to donate for that weekend. We will be actually uh, packing bags at the school on um, May, no, April 30th, April 30th, because we'll be delivering them on Friday, May 1st. 
We'll be delivering to the school, all of every school employee. We have um, the NAACP is donating. All of the unions are donating. We have reached out to different organizations who will also be donating. So we could actually give uh, 250 students a weekend of good health and love. The teachers will be donating all books, brand new books for uh, the students as well. We would love to be able to adopt uh, Oxford and Noble Elementary School, but at this time we're not able to do that. But if the community helps pitch in, whatever we have left over will also go to Noble Elementary School. So if you need any more information on this, please contact me. We need your community help to help Oxford Elementary School. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. All right. Anybody else? All right. So now time for what do they call it? Council President's Report. That's me. Um, so thank you to all the members of council and to Addie and to our law director for uh, helping us through um, getting a legislative process together. Uh, this was something that the leadership felt very uh, uh, compelled to, to get done at, you know, since we got sworn in in January, we wanted to make sure that we had a very clear understanding between the six and soon to be seven of us of what that process uh, looks like. We spent a couple of hours last week. I think it was time well spent. And I think, we, um, I think we've come to a consensus, which is always a good thing. Um, and, you know, perhaps we've created a template for, for future councils, who knows. Um, on the TWG Noble Station project, April 4th, is the um, ABR uh, review, the Architectural Board of Review um, review <laughs> on, um, on uh, Thursday and then April 10th, the Planning Commission is going to review this for the last time before we get, not, not the last time ever, but probably the last time before we get the legislation, which will likely be on April 15th, um, you know, but look for that. Um, the Russo Grocery Outlet, Sal Russo is here tonight. Thank you for attending. Um, and thank you for your emails. We've gotten a lot of emails about, about that. I just wanna let you know that unless and until council gets legislation, we don't know and really cannot comment on any terms because we haven't seen any yet, but uh, certainly if and when, um, you'll hear from council at the appropriate time. Um, Council applications for the vacancy. There were 17. Uh, Eddie, would you mind reading them? These are the 17 people that applied for the open seat. Graham Ball, Raymond Braun, Jean Gordon, Adam Portner, Jim Posh, James Nemestil, Ronald Oswick, Juan Quarte, Quarte. excuse me if the pronunciation's wrong, Quarte, uh, Lou Radiv Radivojevic, uh, Michael Riley, Roderick Rush, Eric Silverman, Patty Substelny, Cole Ware, Darlene White, James Williams, and Ray Wilson. Okay. So uh, the next thing that happens is the League of Women Vo Voters do a video interview of the 17 candidates. Then um, on April 15th, which is our next meeting, we'll, we'll discuss the candidates in executive session. And then we have to, by law... Uh, make a decision by May 2nd. So that's the timeline. We have 45 days to make that decision. And I'm, I will only speak of this contingency as a uh, matter of law. It's in the charter. If we were unable to make a decision, the mayor would then um, get to make that decision. Uh, and I think out of the corner of my eye, I see the mayor shaking his head. No. Um, so uh, that concludes my report, I think. Oh, one more thing. I want to refer, oh, I almost forgot this. I want to refer the places of worship uh, legislation, which is 031-2024 to planning committee. So that's on the record, 031-2024, the places of worship uh, legislation goes to planning committee. Um, and I have no further business. So does the council have any further business? So, um is oh, it is okay that I send an email now to Eric Zamp and copy the mayor for his attendance at that meeting? You could. Okay, thank you. Alrighty. And this meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much for attending. <laughs>